I, I am so grateful, honestly, for you to take your time and, and join us on Going Solo Podcast. I know you've got a ton of things going on. And any type of intro I do is not going to do justice because you do so many things. But for listeners, I want to just dive in and, and intro uh, actor, CEO, singer, uh, wellness coach, speaker, motivational speaker, and on and on. Miss Gwendolyn Osborne, thank you for, for being with me today. Oh, thank you. That is so kind of you. Thank you very <laughs> much. I appreciate that. What a beautiful intro. Well, I... um. You know, I, I've I've read up on your story, and it's an amazing story. And there's several reasons why I wanted to reach out and and speak with you, even personally. Um, but can you kind of give an overview of of where you've come from, and and uh, you know what your start was, and we'll kind of get into the the journey of Gwendolyn. But uh, just kind of want to outline, you know, where where you started, where where where's Gwendolyn from? Okay. I'm from Bath, England, originally, which is in the southwest of England. Um, originally, it was Avon County, and now it's Somerset. Somerset. <laughs> Somerset. And that's, Somerset. is that west of London? Kind yes, of? it's west of London, uh, just south of Wales, um, north of Colleton and Devon, and there's yummy little areas down there. I've never uh, been there. I've been north to like Stratford upon Avon, but I've never been. Oh, it's not far. It is not I'm, far. Oh, from it Stratford isn't. Upon okay. Avon. No, you can actually bike. You can get on the canal, which is it's what crazy. I used to do as a child. And you get on your bike and you can actually ride to Stratford upon Avon. Very pretty. The The history there is just amazing. Like every yeah. time I, you know, meet people from over there, it's just when you talk about the history, as you know, here in America, it's like, okay, yeah, 1776. Great. And then there it's like, when you're at Warwick Castle and it's like year 1000, I'm like, I can't even conceive it. Like, it's just, a, it's, it's an amazing Yeah, place. like the Roman baths, you know, I mean, obviously being a child growing up there, I didn't appreciate any of that. <laughs> and, you know, there's one beautiful main street where it's to go shopping in downtown Bath. And that's where I would ride my bike. I'd ride my bike to, um, to dance class mm -hmm. every Saturday. And as I got older, it became like every other day. But, uh, you know, I would ride past all the cathedrals and, Mm. you know the the bridges and and uh you know the the bath spa you just just don't think of it being something so historical and have so much meaning to it and now that i know that the roman baths are like a magical place i'm like i'm from a magical place called <laughs> bath <laughs> so you grew up there and then i understand you know when you were a teenager is when you made the move to to miami yes what what was that like? It's one thing, you know, first of all, it's one thing uprooting in your teenage years, period, no matter where you're at. But I can't imagine crossing the Atlantic and going to, all right, I'm, I'm leaving a whole new country. Like, what, what was that like? Well, it wasn't quite as drastic as that because, well, it still was drastic, but not quite as newly drastic for me because my parents divorced when I was six. Mm. And so instead of parents just being in two different cities or states or something like in America, mine went to two different countries. So my dad was in England and my mom was in Miami from six years old. And uh -huh. so I actually did live in Miami from six to nine years old. So I Got experienced it. second, third and fourth grade in Miami, Dade County, Cut the Ridge Mall. Like <laughs> I, I was, you know, in performing arts schools then and I was in the Miami Youth Symphony Orchestra playing the cello and I was dancing there too. So um, this has always been a part of my life um, and what has kept me happy and going and strong consistently. Um, so when we, when I decided at 16 to move there, I had already been uh, going to the Brit School Performing Arts in London and uh, for a year before I decided to move to Miami. And and just, I know this is like a side story, but I think it matters. I, as I was this unaccompanied minor growing up all the time mm -hmm. on the planes, I always remember Virgin Atlantic and Virgin Atlantic was like brand new then. And it was um, Richard Branson. And I only knew this because I was just, you know, a little kid on these planes a lot by myself or with my brother. And, you know, I'd read the magazines and I would love the way that it was red and it was bright and like, and the um, air hostesses were always just so friendly and loving and kind and just so fun and upbeat. It was so different from like British Airways. You know, I was just like, this is it. Like, this is a business that I would love to have. Like, I'm already thinking in that way. 
So I'd read the magazines in the back of the chairs and, and you know, I found out that Richard Branson owns this place. So it stayed in my mind that this guy was a good businessman. So when mm. he was the one behind the Brits School of Performing Arts in London, I was like, oh, I need to look into this school. So really by the age of like 11, so once I went back to England from being in Miami, I, I kind of had my ear out that this was happening. And he was working with so many of the record execs over there to create this performing arts school that was free. Uh, wow. All you needed to do was be a triple threat. You had to, you know, sing, dance and act and, um, and play an instrument. So you had to have a lot of talent to be able to get into it. Um, but it was paid for and it was um, also took away the question of, you know, what if it doesn't work out for you in this industry? Because mm. he wanted to make sure that you were um, trained in front of the camera, behind the camera, on the stage and off the stage, that you would always have a job in the industry, no matter what. So you could stay within your passion. So that was, so then I did. And I, I went and I auditioned. I got in at six, uh, 15. I was there until I was 16. And then when I ended up moving to Miami, um, I had to audition again for another performing arts college, New World School of the Arts, which was similar, but not quite as incredible. Um, the Brit School is known for Adele, um, Amy Winehouse. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, many famous kids have come out of there. So, I mean, that was after me because <laughs> I was one of the first. <laughs> but you notice, did you notice the difference between a British arts education and, a, and an English arts education like around oh, there? Yeah. Or, are they pretty? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, from very young. It's, it's very different and um, it's not as um, rewarding in mm. England, right? Like, Interesting. Uh, and, I, and I'm noticing this, noticing this as I'm raising my children too. Like, you know, it, there's an expectation of, um, of a work ethic that is mm. just ingrained into how you work and how you uh, complete goals over there. It's very different um, standard of... Of, of excellence, I guess you could say. Like there's a different standard of excellence that's expected and there's not really much celebration for it. Like you do get the the goods of what you've worked for, but there's no like huge party. So, and here in America, mm. I feel like there's a party for everything. We like a little pop and circus dance here. Yeah, I love a party. Don't get me wrong. You know? yeah. just, there's, there's a lot of um, more reward system here. You know, as an artist, you want that positive reinforcement, or at least I do. And I want that like, oh, I must be doing so, like oh, yeah. what I'm giving out. I'm like, get that positive. And yeah. it, it sounds like more of a, in a term of endearment way, more of a boot camp over there yeah. where, where you grew up of like, hey, yep, that's great, but we can do yeah. better or, or. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a lot of that. I mean, I was, you know, my, my ballet teacher, I remember it was like, you you would do your exams and then you would get to the next level. And because you did well in your exam, you get to the next mm. level and that's your reward, you know, mm. so like that you're, that you're doing well and you're being successful in what you're working hard at. Um, and also even in martial arts, like you would, you, you know, you do your gradings and you get your next belt. Well done. You know, maybe we'll go and have a dinner, but it's not, I don't know. There seems to be like a big reward system over here, which I'm not saying I'm against at all. Right. I, I do think there's a nice balance of the both. And speaking of, I, I I think I read or heard somewhere that your dad was your sensei. In, my dad in, was my sensei. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, and so it was tough because he was um, he was the Bath University martial arts coach for um, Shotokan <laughs> is the type of wow. uh, karate that I did, and um, so I would go and I was like 11, 12, 13. I think I was done by thirteen. <laughs> I didn't want to do You're it like anymore. But I was in there with you know university students, so. Um, my sparring partner was six foot nine, which is odd. Okay. But for whatever reason, he started at the same time I did. I never forget him. His name was John, big ginger guy. And he big was six John. nine, gentle giant. But like, still, I'm like having to spar with a six foot nine guy who's trying to figure out how to, you know, keep control of his hands and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it worked. Well, I'm tough I because of it. I never did karate, but I did do Taekwondo around the same age. And it, for me, and I was like, when, when I was like a little chunk ball growing up, I mean, I was Aww. an overweight kid, but yeah. that taught me, like, I, I got flexible because of that, but it yeah. did give me some dis discipline. And, and I read also that you, you kind of credit, credit your older sister. I think it's Judith 
when yes. you two would like sing along to fame, the TV show fame. Yes. And, uh, and that kind of kept that spark going. Absolutely. And it's, it's funny you say my sister, because I was thinking of both of them as you were talking, actually, because my brother was the British champion of Taekwondo at 16 years old. So unreal. he switched over. He, he left Shotokan Karate and he went over to Taekwondo. So I know all about that. And now he's teaching his sons that. But um, no, my sister and I, yeah, we're 10 years apart. And so she was kind of like a mini mom for me. Awesome. And um, yeah, we would do all the Janet Jackson videos. Remember VHS? Like oh, yeah. rewind and you know, do, 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 do. <laughs> so yeah, lots of fun with her. Well, it's, um, so we're getting up to this point where, you know, you, you grew up in England, you, you, you have this amazing, amazing education, you growing up karate, riding horses, athletic, uh, music, all this. It sounds like in 2001 is when you moved to Hollywood. Yes. It, okay. Am I right on that year? Now yes. what, what, and I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it and I might get a little emotional because I don't have a parallel story as you have, but in 2001, I moved to Hollywood and I had left. I come from a small town, 700 people in South Dakota. Like I, you know, but I had dreams and that year, that same year I moved out there and, um, I remember like I kept a journal and I still keep a journal of all those experiences and I've had great experiences, but when I read your story, not only did you move out there in 2001, but you were a mom. What was so amazing is I know how I felt, but I can't imagine. I absolutely cannot imagine what it was like to be a mom and then also in charge of this beautiful new being in this world. And you're, I think I heard on another podcast, I think it was Don, your uh, Don Marie podcast or something. You said this beautiful thing while you, while, you, while you were carrying your child, like, girl, we're going for this. And yeah. can you talk about that experience? Yeah. Um, I, I, just, I just, when I became pregnant with her, I knew I was keeping her. And, you know, I'm pro-choice for any women. I am pro-choice and I, I wish things were different in this. Sure. <laughs> sure today yeah um but i knew it was a blessing even though i was only 17 and i made the choice that even though it would be hard to be a single young teen mom in america newly here in america that um it would have been harder to have not have had her mm. for me to not to also when you as a woman are in those positions and you go into a doctor they let you know that if you choose to have an abortion, know that this could also cause you to never have children again. And the risk of that was worse for me than for me to take on being a mother. So I, I took on that responsibility very heavily. And I was like, I'm going to be the best mother I can be for her. And I'm also going to, something innately in me just knew I would be strong enough to give her her dreams and also have mine too. And, um, I just knew I was going to be able to do it. I don't know why I just did. And so I knew I wanted to continue on in the industry. And I was just balancing out at that point, having her being a model and still, you know, putting my toes back into being an actor and staying in that world. So I did a couple things in Miami to make sure I had my SAG card. Cause mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure if I came out to LA, that I was prepared and ready and there was no reason, you know, why nobody would want to take me on as an agent. Um, I mean, as an agent to take on an actor. And so I guess, I guess being a mother really taught me about having long term, the difference between long term and short term goals and mm. being financially healthy and well and making sure that you're taking care of yourself, the balance of taking care of yourself as well as taking care of somebody else. I had to learn all those things really, really young. So, oh, and I have someone trying to come in right now. Are you okay, Landon? Okay, that's my youngest. She's 11. She's fine. She can join if she wants to. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, and so I knew that by the age of five, I was like, she can come with me if I'm going to be, if I'm committing to Los Angeles, then she should start school there. Uh, um, that's when I knew I was a boss. I was like, yeah. you know what? 
I'm going to have to figure out how to pay rent in Miami, how to make sure that we also have a place for when we get to LA. And so at one point I was paying rent in two different States and I was 23. Right. And then I was like registering her for school. And the hardest part about it was that once I got to LA and she got into school, they were like, right. So it's 9 a.m. So we'll see you at 1230. And I was like, excuse me, what? (laughs) (laughs) What? They were like, yeah, school's done by 1230. I was like, what am I supposed to do in three hours? How do I work? You know, Um, I can't imagine. Yeah. And so I that was the thing. I was like, does nobody work here? Like we. I mean, hilarious. I nine to five, you know. Hilarious. Uh, but I, I figured it out, and and honestly, I just um, and still today, is every day. I'm like, every day is a new day, and I just, I think about my moments. Like I'm always just like, where am I at right now, and what can I be grateful for right now? And I'm mm. obviously better at that now than I was then, but yeah, I think that I just have always had me. And I think going back to where we started in this podcast, where I talk about being in two different countries and being on a plane by myself a lot, or just with my brother, learning how to navigate an airport at six or seven years old, you know, I think that that gave me a certain strength that I I've been able to keep, you know, and, and take with me that no matter where I go, I still have me. And I know that I can rely on me to be okay and take care of me. I just think it's amazing because I, like I said, I, I, I was just trying to take care of myself back then yeah. and yeah. you having to, okay, I get three hours to work with. And in these three hours I have to do X, Y, Z. And then I have, you know, a beautiful daughter to take care of. It is, that's, that's truly amazing. And it's, um, just thank you. Kudos. Well, you know and- what I did? I was not going to accept the three hours. I was like, so there has to be a way out of this. And they were like, oh, well, there are programs after school, but they cost like a <laughs> yeah. gazillion dollars. And I was like, <laughs> oh, OK, well, like, is okay. there a way for it to not cost a gazillion dollars? And I still get like until three o'clock. And they said, yes, actually, you know, there are there's a program that you can submit to and see if you get a scholarship. So I was like, well, yes. So um, I did. And then um, they had to split the scholarship between my daughter and another child. And so I still I ended up paying half of whatever it would be. But I was like, able to figure it out. And so for me, I'm like, there's always a way there's always a way you can figure it out. So then I was able to get like a full six hour day to go and work. And so I was just doing runway, you know, I think that communication is key. And you just constantly have to know that. Here's the thing I, I hear a lot of oh, well, there, you know, they have that big job or, you know, that big name or whatever. It doesn't matter. There's still a human being that still has to use the toilet and wash their hands and, do you know what I mean? Like, do all the, go to the doctor, like, all the things that everybody has to do. So at the end of the day, you can, you can have those things in front of you if you want to, to hinder you or intimidate you, or you can just swipe them away and deal with everybody as a human being. And that's pretty much what I do. I I love that when you're talking about, (laughs) you know, people, so kind of a great lead into you're working your tail off, you're supporting, you're paying properties at two different places. And then, you know, you are on the price is right. And everyone in the world knows the price is right. Right. And, and um, longest running woman of color on the price is right, which is amazing. Congratulations on that. Thank you. And I, you're right, Gwendolyn, because I think when we see somebody like on TV or we see somebody that says, holy cow, they've got, they got a hell of a lot of followers and, and they just, they must not have any big issues going on. They must just have it. Like, what would be one thing, what, it, like, especially with the prices, right? What is one kind of misperception that people have when they're like, oh, there's, there's Gwendolyn with Bob Barker and Drew Carey and, and, you know, everything's fine and rosy and everyone's happy. But, but what don't people see behind the scenes that are like, wow, like, I mean, I think it's just the work. I think people really don't see the work. I think, I mean, 
I have said many times, I think people look at me and think that I jump around on pink clouds from here yeah. to there. You know what I mean? Like that that's how life is for me. And maybe that's what I portray. I don't mean to, but I mean, yeah. maybe that's what comes off. And I guess that's a good thing because if I make you feel like pink clouds, right. then I'm happy about that. But I think it's just the work. It's like to get to the place of the price is right. I had been doing runway already for 11 years. Do you know what I mean? And I was also taking jobs that other models didn't want to take because mm. I was a single mom, you know? That's a great you know, point. They're like, oh, $300 for two hours. I don't want to do that. And I'm like, $300 for two hours is actually pretty good. Okay. <laughs> That's Most a normal great people point. would love to be able to make $300 in two <laughs> hours. Okay. So like, I'm going to go work that job at Neiman Marcus that you don't want to do. And they also never liked talking to people. A lot of models don't like talking to people. And I'm like, I talk to everybody. That's fine. So I would get the jobs where you got to talk to people, you know, and, and deal with people. So, and maybe I wouldn't if I didn't have to. I don't know. But I, I, I took on the mindset, I'm going to enjoy this. This is my life. This is what I've chosen. And this is what takes care of me and my child, you know. Um, so I, I think, you know, people forget that, that every person that is successful and that you see and not also, you know, there's the people we don't see, but like, like, I think admire people's work ethic again, like know that it does not magically just happen. You know, um, before the runway, it was like, I was, I, I, how I actually got to prizes right is I had been on an audition and I didn't get it. Um, I went and worked on the bold and the beautiful, which they taped next door. And wasn't somebody from the Price is Right yeah. on the set of The Bold and Beautiful? Did right. I, so one yeah. of the grips named Ed was Ed. over there. He's the pyrotechnician. And I love all my grips, right? Like I've always, I loved, I love all the people that work backstage. Like we would keep each other going every day. And and he came and he was like, came over to Price is Right. He goes, I saw a girl over here and, and she was, you know, I mean, you need to have her come and audition over here. And they were like, okay. And so I auditioned again. And then they were like, why didn't we book you the first time? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm here now. So that was that was how I got there, you know. It's like <clears throat> always just being on my game, always trying to be ready, prepared, um seeing myself. I like I love to manifest and and mm. envision how I want to see myself, where I see myself, how I see myself. How am I feeling in that self that I've created, you know? Yeah. And so I think that when when I do that for myself, that also allows me to acknowledge it when I've got it, you know, like when I'm sitting in that moment where I had thought about sitting in the car that I really ever mm. wanted and was driving around in. you know, it's like, those are things that I've thought of already and have wanted for myself. Have you always done manifesting like that? Or is that something like, I think I have, um, but not as intentionally Mm. as I have in the last maybe eight years um, or seven years, seven or eight years. Um, but I do think that I have, yes, always seen myself. I didn't know it was manifesting, but I think that I've always had an expectation for myself of what I've wanted. And I think I am hard on myself with that mm. too. Because like, I think- What do you mean I've, hard on yourself? Like- I am very self-disciplined. Um, so if I've created something that I've wanted for myself and promised it to myself, I am going to create the type of life that's needed in order for that to happen and the wow. structure of how that looks. And I'm going to, the commitment to myself is so strong mm. that I cannot let myself down. So I do feel like sometimes I am hard on myself. It's hard for me to be able to go, just chill, girl. Yeah. You can stay in bed today. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you can watch the uh, My Crazy Ex-Girlfriend's season four, <laughs> episode 16 or whatever. <laughs> like, it's okay. <laughs> so um, so it's hard for you just to sit and like, I'm, you know, yeah. I've always got something going on because I just have, you know kind of neurotic but are you kind of the same way do you always yes. have projects going well, because i feel on? Like there's always something that needs to be done you know I, yeah. so i do i do uh yeah and so I, i've i've always been quite somebody uh, a visionary i guess you could say for myself and i i don't give up i think people have also noticed that like i am persistent i'm like um yeah. i i'm not where i'm i'm not there yet so let's keep going or let's try this path or this way or this person or you know like there's always a way 
Well, and to that point, when you're talking about let's try this path, it kind of leads into an, another theme, again, learning about you is you seem, to, to, this confidence that you have, you seem to be able to jump without a safety net. Mm. And I so, like, I've done that a couple times in my life and it's scary as shit because I'm like, okay, I'm going to fall. I'm going to get hurt. But like you you have done this consistently and can you speak to specifically when you left the price is right? Like it wasn't because of like, it seemed like, correct me, but it, it seemed like it wasn't this like, Oh, we've got some external change in management. And because of that, I've got to leave or there's this externality that exists. And because of that, it seems when I read about it, it is you just knew. Yeah it was time to go like, what, what is that? Like what happened there? I, at the time had just finished producing with my ex-husband when we were together, the uh, meet the Smiths reality show. And that was one of the most challenging jobs and situations in life that I had ever come across because I had to be the mother on screen and off screen. Mm -hmm. I had to be so careful about, balancing um, the sensitivity of teenagers mm. um, and being a mother to a toddler, because London was one at the time. <laughs> um, Malloy was five. And so, and then managing the ex-husband and his ego and what was going on with him doing that, because, you know, he's really the star of the show. And so that was exhausting, but I knew it was going to be so worth it. And um, so when I went back to The Price is Right, I looked at it very differently now because I was like, oh, I've kind of been in this position now of like running a whole show, right? Of knowing yeah. how this goes. So I went back with a different confidence, I guess, and I, a different knowing of myself and knowledge of how things work in the industry. And I said, wow, to myself, I'm going to, I'm going to propose some ideas of the price is right and see how that goes and see if I can grow here or, you know, if there's something more for me that, and that didn't work. <laughs> but you tried. That's... I tried. And so I was like, Oh, that's funny. Okay. <laughs> um, I know that being here at the price is right. I'm not going to be able to manage trying to do more outside of this being a mother to these kids you know and a wife at the time we were also starting a, our own production company yes. um, i'm not gonna be able to do all this and stay here the only way that i can do this is to believe that there's more for me out there i just i just have to believe mm. um and and to be honest it didn't go exactly how I thought it was going to go. Like, it wasn't just like, Oh, I just stepped out of here and I went over there. Like, no, yeah. I, it wasn't. Um, I ended up going through a divorce, you know? So now I'm dealing with that. And I did get tapped on the shoulder at a funeral. So it happened in a very odd place that I got tapped on the shoulder by Patty Jenkins at a funeral and she asked me to be one of the Amazons for Wonder Woman there. And it wasn't also like she just came. I mean, it was great and hello, dreamy, like that some a director would ask that of me. Right. But so I still awesome. had to prove myself. Like I still had to audition and like go through the channels of because she's going to she can say she wants. But she, I'm, I'm like the look she wants and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But like, can yeah. I perform? You know what I mean? Can I do what I need to do for right. this job? Right. So, I mean, you know, my audition was to jump up a wall in a harness and land in a flip. Like, I'd never done that before, you know? So, yeah, you know, it wasn't the easiest, but I'll just say all it is for me once again is relying on myself. Mm. Like, I'm investing in myself. And and am I going to let myself down? You know, like, when, when we go to the gym and people are complaining because they've hired a trainer, but then they're pissed off at their trainer. But yes. you're like, but you asked the trainer to do this for you because you couldn't do it for yourself. Yes. I'm the trainer for myself. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm the That's trainer awesome. for myself. I'm having that whole conversation going on in here, going, 
you know, you, you really, I know you can do better for yourself right now. And I know that you're, you're feeling a little tired, but come on, do you think that you could do a little more? Like that's the kind of conversations I'm having with myself all the time. And I can't imagine you're, you're having those with yourself while you're in an auditioning room with, I think it was Reese, some volleyball Olympic champion and like these Gabrielle amazing Reese, yeah. athletes. And yeah. you have to have, like, it seems like you have to believe what you're saying to yourself in those situations. Cause like, oh, yeah. again, I can't imagine you're, you're with the elite. I mean, you were an elite Amazonian in, the, in, I mean, a real life wonder woman. And I don't say that lightly because um, and I, it was fun because we watched that opening scene with my kids yesterday and I'm like, yeah, that's who we're getting. They're like, Oh my Aww. God, that's so cool. Look at her. She's jumping. Like, and, me so happy. Oh no, Thank it was cool. It, it was so cool. And, and Jack, my youngest, and he had a question for you that he wanted me to ask you. Oh way, yeah, he's like, no problem. He's like, are those real what they're jumping on? And then I yeah. like what you're doing, like four story high, like posts that you're jumping on. I was putting up an inflatable snowman on my one story house and my knees were shaking. Like, <laughs> but it's so to believe that, like, that is such a, it's such a great message because you're, you, it's one thing to say, yes, Hey, be yourself and go do this and go do that. But you have to internalize that if you're with the best of the best, which you yeah. are. Yeah. Like constantly. Like, I mean, um, I can tell you two things about that experience you know well one is that my children came to visit their dad brought them to visit on set while I was doing those 40 foot 40 story jumps crazy and they know that I was super scared of heights and I I had to I had to fulfill it like I I couldn't be up there and they're down there watching me and, and not do it you know like I had to find a way and for me, the story I created in that moment was I could see trees, treetops. I was so high that I was above treetops. Like I'm saying that to you now, going, oh my God, I was above treetops. So I'm looking at the treetops in the far distance. And I was like, if my children needed me and mm. they were over there, I had better know how to run on these big old poles to get to them. And that, it was where I put my mind. There's no other option. You can't give up. Go. And that's what would make me take that first step. If it wasn't for those kinds of thoughts, I would never have been able to do it. Because honestly, like, I was waking up in cold sweats. <laughs> oh. I mean, I was... <laughs> I can't imagine. <laughs> it was really scary. It was, I was crying up there. Like, it oh. doesn't matter. But I would, you know, just be like... I'd be like, I like, I'm um, yeah, I'm crying. I'm like, okay, 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 okay. I gotta get over it. Let's go, let's go. And when you speak to some of those stunt women, like, you know, they were like, we're scared every day when we do our job. And it's our job to overcome that fear. So I was like, okay, I'm one of you right now. I'm one of you. Let's go. Like, you know, teach me your mindset. Teach me. I'm always open to learning. And so they, they're incredible. To me, they are like the scientists of, of movies because they, they are the ones that will risk their lives on mm. the science of their minds and their bodies, right? Because they're the ones that have to learn how to, if you're outside, they've got to deal with the elements and the wind and the weight factor of themselves and who they're against and what, where they're trying to go. So they're, they're doing math in their mind, you know, like constantly. So I admire those stunt women. Oh, it's just, they're magnificent. So they got me through, but then, um, there were like two Olympians that are Amaz um, Amazonians with me. Uh, Jade Johnson being one of them. She's a silver medalist for England for the, the 400 meters, I think. I, sorry, Jade, if I got that wrong. Um, either way, the girl's fast. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, this is her life. This is all she's done. And I'm like next to her on the line, having to make everybody in the world believe that I can do the, what she can do, right? So obviously I can't do exactly what she could do, but I can make you think that I can. So that really is at the end of the day, what it is, it was that mindset and that's what they wanted to capture. And now I see the film, you know, Patty wanted mm -hmm. to capture that intense mindset of, of what an Amazonian has in her, mm -hmm. in her mind, of what she can achieve and accomplish. I mean, obviously, yes, she, they, she wanted to have the grace and the athleticism, but I think that that was what it was 
that she was looking for in the look of somebody. It was the mindset. Well, you absolutely had that. You can tell on screen. I mean, you're right in the middle of that whole line yeah. in the yeah. beginning. And that's, I mean, there's just, you. it exudes strength. It exudes elitism. And I mean, I know you had, you had actors like Robin Wright, like on the end line, but you're right in the middle. And, and I thought the other thing that was cool too, is that there's so many, there's so many things about your story one that, that I love it, that it kind of, it kind of punches through these. Um, so for example, like I, I'm for myself, I'm mid forties. And when I was in my twenties, I thought I better make it now. Cause I always wanted to like perform around the world. I better make it now or I'm screwed. Like there's going to be <laughs> like, you know, right. and in a way like, and I'm at a much smaller scale, but in a way I feel like I'm just starting to discover other things and you seem, cause we're not even only talking about being with these athletes, but, um, a lot of these women were younger than you oh, yeah. and you're stepping in and, and killing it. And again, I, it's like all these, all these stop signs or whatever, like you've just kind of just ran right through them and <laughs> It's just a theme. And I just, oh, it's, it's so thanks. cool. It's so cool. So congrats Thank on all you. of that. It's amazing. I think that you should always feel like things are possible. Mm. Um, yeah. And I mean, listen, I, I, I bruised the bones in my foot training for Wonder Woman, right? So even before... I got there. So when if you, the audition you see on my Instagram where I'm running up the wall and doing that, yeah. that, that yeah. flip, I have on a black thing on my foot because I was trying to cover up the fact because I had a boot on. And I oh. obviously couldn't go into the audition with a boot on. So I took the boot off and I found just like a very supportive strap and made it look like it was part of my leggings. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, yeah, there was that. And then when I got to England, I actually hurt the other foot in the same exact Space and they said it was a weakness in my feet that I'd already had, but because of this intense training, obviously it was just too much. So, but I just I figured it out. I went to you know the people I knew in the city to go and and heal it while I was on set. Like I would just because I was I'm not gonna give up. Like yeah, like I'm here and I'm not gonna let one little foot stop me. Like come on, like let's go, body. I got you. That was one thing I learned from the Olympians. They were like, stay in tune and connected to your body and talk to it. The same mm -hmm. way people tell you to talk to plants, talk to your yeah. body. And maybe you feel crazy and weird, but you've got to let your body know chemically, I got you. Mm. I got you. I am not going to hurt you more. Okay. I'm going to educate myself on what's best for you. And I'm going to do the things that are best for you, but I need you back with me so that we can do this together. You know what I mean? And I do feel like that has helped me so much, even with a cold or a sinus infection or something like, it's like, we got each other body. Like, come on, you know? Cause when you think about it, people go, you know, into comas and stuff, it becomes right. a different thing, right? It becomes about the separation of the brain and the body and the disconnect. So when we have it together like this, I feel like we should be connected to it. Like be grateful for it. Be, be acknowledging of what, each thing in your body does for you and be so grateful for it every day, you know, and that is how I start my day every day. Well, I, that was the other thing I was going to ask as you talk about, like I followed you, I follow you on Instagram and um, you, you do so many great things with like, you had 30 days moving with Gwen and you know, the importance of um, the importance of moving and the importance of your body and mind and do you have a daily ritual where you're meditating every day or what, what does that look like from a health perspective, what you do every day? Um, I do meditate every morning. I do. I'll do the calm app. I love Jay Shetty and I'll do um, a guided meditation every day, whether it's him or um, the other, Tamara Levitt is on there and I love her as well. Um, Christian Wolf is amazing. Jeff Warren's amazing. Um, so if I can fit in doing my own silent meditation, I will do that even if it's only five minutes, because honestly, sometimes five minutes of not thinking mm. can be very difficult. And 
and you know to and to and to stay in practice is difficult you know because even when i was when i became certified i had to do 25 minutes of meditation and i had to be able to do a guided 25 minute meditation so mm. you know you just keep building up and and you know then 25 minutes doesn't seem like anything you know but when you're not in practice Five minutes seems like a lot, you know, so I'm constantly trying to make sure I stay up on my practice so that I can stay moving up in the numbers or somewhere around 20 minutes if I can, you know. Yeah. Um, and then I, I definitely work out ev almost every day, almost every day. It's hard for me to not work out. If I don't work out, I, I feel like I've not brushed my teeth. Really? Does it yeah. help your mind too? Does it free your yeah, mind up a little bit? It definitely. I just feel like it's it's a part of a routine that needs to happen for me to work well. And um, I do different types of workouts, whether that be um, on my Peloton or I've just you know I find a group fitness class area where I'll do circuit training and um, and then uh, I also love my jump rope. I do my jump rope where I can walk around the neighborhood and, you know, jump rope. Um, and I love yoga, as you see me doing yoga a lot. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely, I mind and body connection for me is huge with that. And I do feel like when I'm starting to get overwhelmed with my emotions or thoughts, I will roll that mat out and go to the mat. And, that's awesome. And sometimes with yoga, I can be going through the movements and I'll just be crying as I'm going through the movements because I needed to cry. I needed to let it out. I needed to just feel that flow. And when I'm done, I feel refreshed. I feel like, okay, you're good. You're back to your center again. I, I, again, like when you talk about these, these real emotions that you feel and, and hearing from someone like you, Gwendolyn, um, super successful and, I think it also gives a permission for other people to say, well, shit, I'm feeling sad today in this society. It's not looked at as, um, we'll expect, I mean, even with young men too, right? It's like, oh, you can't cry or you can't, you know, show that emotion. And to hear someone like you talk about, we're all human. We all go through these things. And here are some things that you can do, whether it's to strengthen your mind, getting getting um, physically fit, but it's okay if you don't feel okay too. Yeah. Oh God, it's absolutely that. okay to not feel okay. And the other thing that's tough for me, and I've worked on this is asking for help. Mm. Like 100%. sometimes you can feel so full of ego and so full of, oh, I should know everything. And it's like, things change all yeah. the time. Like, yeah. The world is constantly, it's literally moving, right? Right. But we're constantly evolving and growing and learning new things that what we should be and trying to um, build upon everything that we've learned so far. And even today, I had to reach out to a girlfriend of mine because my daughter didn't want to listen to me. Yeah. And I was like, I just need your help in what you do as a mother in this particular situation, you know? And it was just so helpful to me with my daughter because I didn't know. I needed another perspective. Right. And it's okay sometimes to want help and ask for help. And I, I think sometimes, you know, we keep thinking vulnerability is a weak thing. And we have to, we have to recognize the vulnerability, acknowledge the vulnerability, and move forward to try to get help for it and not feel weak because it. Because the strength that you feel for revealing that, hmm. and like you said, also the strength you're giving others for revealing <laughs> that, you you're allowed like you said you're allowing others to be human and just yeah. be on this journey together you know it's it's so beautifully said if you think about you know your kids or you think about um anyone that wants to go and chase their dreams in a creative field right what would be what would be your advice to them go <laughs> <laughs> go <laughs> like why aren't you doing it you know do you want to have a conversation about what's the first fear you know let's do that like let's get rid of the fear and replace it with a love that's and awesome the, the love is what we need you know what i mean the, the love for what you do is what's going to get you where you're going you know and the, the love that you exude 
will also attract more love too. And you will get what you want. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, because because I mean, so many times people will say, well, you know, make sure you got this, this, this. And you remind me of another friend that I that I have that's going through this. And he's all about just just take the action now. Just go, go. Don't worry about go. it, you know? And like for me, sometimes I, I'll get afraid. I'll be like, I'm going to look like an idiot. I'm going to mess up. I'm going to do this. Or, you know, I got to make sure this is perfect. But when you say go, it's just like, it, and the other thing, and I think you mentioned this too on another podcast is you mentioned Steve Harvey's book, Jump. Yes. And he's got yeah. this, he's got this video of him talking to the crowd about jumping without that safety net. And again, so and I love, thank you so much for sharing all these examples that you've given, but he he mentioned, like you mentioned after the price is right, it wasn't like, oh, automatically things were great for me. Right. He says, you that, that chute is not gonna open up right away. Right. And you're gonna get banged up a little bit, but here you are, you leave that, and now, I mean, truly yeah. Superwoman, you know, Amazonian, Wonder Woman 1984, it's so cool. But just your example, I think it does give permission to say, go, go for it. Yeah, go, go, because what you need will come. Mm. What you mm. need will come and who you need will come as well. They may not come when you think they should, but who you need will come. That's, could, I could not say it better than what you just said. So I, I know we're approaching an hour here. Um, I do have a couple other questions I do want to ask you, Gwendolyn. Okay, good. Okay. Um, and again, thank you so much for spending time. This is awesome. One question I have for you. If you could only take one vitamin, what would it be? So hard. Um... I have a like wellness formula that I take that I buy okay. from Whole Foods. It's a big chunky vitamin and it has like everything that you need Please. for everyday wellness. And it, and it, and it basically helps you to stop getting sick, especially if you have kids, you can get sick. Real. So that I feel like has, it has like the zinc and the magnesium mm. and everything that you need as a whole, maybe that would be the one. But if I had to also choose for my my mental health, I like ashwagandha a lot. Ashwagandha? Ashwagandha. Ashwagandha. All right. Yeah. And that, you can get in any kind of form, you know, gummy form or um, you can swallow it as a pill. But that is for basically just mood enhancement mm. and mood regularity. Um and I really like that one a lot. I feel like it makes a difference in how I feel. Awesome. Next question. Have you ever had what, or I'm assuming, have you ever had a creative block and what did you do to get through that? Oh, I mean, I don't know if I'd say I've had a creative block or just like, I mean, maybe it's the same thing, like a frustrating time where I haven't booked and I'm like, what am I doing? You know, yeah. um, how did I get through? I just keep going. <laughs> I just keep going. And you I'm just like, don't give up. Just don't give up. Like I, I'm like, I, I, I don't just keep going. I think I do analyze what what what's going on like what am what have been my methods what new things could i learn what suits me what feels good what doesn't feel good like you know do analyze where i'm at and what's going on and then i will try to change and do something new you know i think the most recent time that that's happened to me i think i just changed my mindset and i i decided i was going to just not really care as much mm. um that sounds not good i don't i don't mean like, i know exactly I, what you're saying like, though and just, it's just let go like it was just like just let go and trust hmm. that i have enough 
you know? And I think that that made a big difference in my life. And I just constantly want to keep learning about the human, like different human experiences and the human body and how it can work. And I just, I think it's quite fascinating. You know, uh, there's so many, obviously every person is completely different with different stories. And so, and being an actor, like that's really such a big part of it is the detective work of, of trying to find out why somebody says something the way they do, or they react the way they do, or they don't. Um, so for me, it's like just constantly being curious. So I stay curious and that helps me through. And my son wanted me to ask you this question. Okay. Jack, he's, right. I go, I go, I'm going to talk to Gwendolyn today. He's like, Aww. so he wrote out, he's got a smiley face on it. How old and he is he? said, he is nine. Okay. So I've got a nine-year-old, a 12-year-old and a 14-year-old. Whoa. And my nine-year-old, yes, exactly. <laughs> People ask me how my kids are doing. I say they're alive. That's all. Then and I'm, they're I'm well. Like, and that, and yeah, that's well. right. Yes. Yeah. He goes, what do you think would have happened if you won that race in Wonder Woman? <laughs> then the whole rest of the movie would have been about me. <laughs> right. Perfect. But instead, let him let Jack know that it was won by the ten-year-old fa- fantastic actor Lily. Lily, she's incredible, and um, and it needed to be about her. So we would have a Wonder Woman and the story about Wonder Woman. Yeah, we're having a sequel though, where you're going to be the Wonder Woman. That yeah. would be nice. Okay. <laughs> sure. It, it probably won't be called Wonder Woman. Something similar, Wonder Lady. I don't know, but yes, I'll, absolutely, I'll take that. And we will be there. We will be there to watch that. Thank you. And finally. Yes. What What do you want people to remember Gwendolyn Osborne by? Oh. I think more than anything, a deep, kind, thoughtful human being. Yeah. It's awesome. Well, I think that's a perfect way to uh, end this, but I um, want to thank you again. I've been so excited to speak with you and I love following you and all that you're doing. Aww. And I just, there's so many nuggets that I think people can take. Um, can you share with people all your social media real quick so people yeah. can follow you and where, where to get every, yes. get all your information? Yes, um, I am oh. at... It's Gwendolyn, I-T-S, Gwendolyn on Instagram. Gwendolyn Osborne Smith on Facebook and Gwendolyn Osborne on TikTok. Snapchat's also Gwendolyn Osborne, I believe. I don't do a lot on Snapchat, but yeah. And you can go to my website, uh, www.gwendolynosborne.com. Awesome. Thank Thank you you so much, Matthew. I really appreciate this.